Now we shall discuss about how the land pattern is being used in various corners of India. Let us see here how is a land called a resource. We have seen in the previous part of the lesson discussing about the various categorization of the resources basing on their origin, basing on the availability, basing on the renewable sources, all these things the categories are being discussed explicitly. After discussing the different characteristics, now moving on to understand land as a resource. Land in the entire world, we have 78% of the earth covered with water and 21% is covered with land. If the statistics are being taken, the entire planet, it covers only 70% of the entire planet into water levels, whereas 29% is covered with uh, land, according to some scientists. It is already proven that Earth is also known as watery planet or a blue planet because most amount of the Earth is covered with water. So, from this discussion, we can come to get the knowledge that the land available in the Earth, the planet itself is limited when compared to the water. Water is two-thirds part of the planet while the earth is only just one-third of the entire planet. So now restricting its resistance or its existence to just one-third of the entire planets, we get to clarity that 30% of the earth what we have has to be utilized very carefully and properly. That's the reason why land is known as finite magnitude or a limited place. In this limited place only, the entire land what we have has been again recategorized into mountains, plateaus, plains, islands, minerals, fossils, fuels, forests. So the entire magnitude of the land has been again categorized broadly into multitudes, sorry, mountains, plateaus, plains, islands, minerals and the forest lands. Now let us again take how much percentage of the land is being covered by mountains, the plains, the plateaus, the islands, the forests. Let us see here. The entire 30% of the land available on the earth is being covered by mountains. So 30% of the entire land is being covered under the mountain shelf. When we move on to the plateaus, we have nearly 27 percentage of the entire land covered with plateaus and further moving on to the plains we have nearly 43 percentage of the India, entire land covered with the plains. Now in order to understand the exactly how does we use the land, what are the different categories of the land uses and that too when you take it in a specific significance to a particular nation and let us understand First of all, how is the land utilized? After knowing that land is available at very small in quantity when compared to water, the entire 100% of the planet has been covered with 70% of the water and 30% with land. Then moving on to understand the knowledge of how do you utilize the land as a resource? What are the different categories of land? How do we categorize the land? In order to understand these things, we have seen the study of finite magnitude where earth is always limited. Generally, in some areas, when water comes or when heavy rains come, the capacity of the river, if it is going beyond the capacity of the river, then it emerges into floods. But there, water may increase and may decrease. When it comes to land, the land do not increase, the land do not decrease. Maybe because of the land slides or hill slides, some part of the land may go on unused, but the land will not get increased at any time. Only land gets, possibilities are there to get decreased. When suddenly any earthquake comes or any tsunami may turn the, increase the water level of the sea body, covering some bit of the land into its area, somehow like that. So there is a possibility of reducing the percentage of land but not any chance to get increase in the possibility of the land area. That's how it is very very difficult. Now understanding this, again it has been categorized into mountains, plateaus, plains, 
mineral regions, islands, forest, fossil fuels and all these things. So, this is the percentage given for us according to the scientists who are studying on this. Now, moving on to understand how is the land utilized on a larger scale. Land has been utilized basically on first category is forest. Land, on land only we have forests. Forest means growing enormous number of trees. Who will grow the enormous number of trees? You will grow. I will grow. No. Nature itself will make it to grow the trees there with an abundant variety of trees growing in there. Those are naturally born trees. Any human being cannot plant any tree in the forest because there is no need to do that. We have huge number of varieties of plants growing in the forest. There may be more than 100 to 500 varieties of plant species growing in that particular forest. There may be different kinds of animals growing in that particular forest. So that's how forests are the naturally given gifts nature on the land. So the land has been utilized for having forests. Then moving on to the land which is not used for agriculture. Means we can get a point here is land is again recategorized into land used for agriculture, land not used for agriculture. Let us now first discuss about land not used for agriculture. When you talk about the land not used for agriculture, again we get the categorization like barren and waste lands. Barren means the dry lands or where the possibility of getting water is very very difficult, where you cannot get even a drop of water. Sir, how people will survive there, sir? People surviving is different. Cultivational lands getting water supply is different. Because, for example, in Rajasthan, if you take, in Rajasthan, you don't get much agricultural fields available for you. But you find people staying there. So, there is a possibility of people to stay there with a limited amount of water resources. But, in order to do cultivation, the underground levels of the water should be increased they should maintain some underground level of water. Then again from externally, you need to give daily water for the crop. That's how where it is not possible in the states like Rajasthan. That is the reason why you find barren and waste lands where they cannot be utilized and later these barren and waste lands will turn into desert lands or empty lands. And afterwards, land put to non-agricultural uses. How is the non-agricultural uses coming on now? Sir, now you told there is a categorization between the land which is used for agriculture, which is not used for agriculture. In the same way, in the non-used agriculture also, some lands can be used in a better way where they can be used for building roads, used for building infrastructure, used for using the connecting roads, buildings and all these things. Where you can establish a factory, when it is a dry land, free land, there you can establish a factory where there is no possibility of growing any agriculture there. Definitely you can use that land to establish a factory and industry or anything and get more amount of opportunities for the people. Let us take an example in Saudi. In Saudi or in the Arab states where you have the possibility of getting water is very very less. But there people are living there, industries are there, factories are there where they do that one. So that's how we can utilize the non-agricultural lands. Next, third categorization is other uncultivated lands. Not used for agriculture, forest lands. Now third category, other uncultivated lands are permanent pastures, permanently dry lands. What sir? Dry lands are dry lands. Again permanently dry lands. Temporary dry lands also will be there. Yes. If in this land heavy cyclone or heavy rains occur during that year, then this land may turn into a cultivatable land. Or if the government plans to get water from the nearby states through pipelines and started to supply water for these lands, then this above lands can be turned into cultivatable lands. There is a possibility like that. That is the reason why these lands are not considered as permanently barren lands. These lands are permanent pastures where even if you try also you cannot get agriculture done there. Let us take an example in Rajasthan desert region. Even if you supply daily water for that 
there is no possibility to grow even a small plant there that is the reason why permanent pastures are declared which are very very dry lands and next land under various trees what are these various trees there may be any number of trees we know n number of trees growing in our earth some trees are good for us some trees are not good according to some of the hindu mythologies some people consider neem tree as a very holy tree and tulsi tree almost you find in everyone's houses also the tulsi tree daily morning maybe your mother will be going and praying to that one and get taking blessings and come there are scientific reasons for that that we get positive vibrations from that the same thing when you go under neem tree you have various spices or various herbs even in medicines also neem tree is been used but sir we are talking about lands which are having various trees various trees means these all are grown in our region only no sir so what is the new thing in this yes neem tree you know tulsi tree you know uh, some other trees also you may be seeing guava tree all these trees you know mango trees all this you know you are possibility of seeing that one in any house you don't find ashoka tree being grown especially in the indian context what is ashoka tree a tree which is growing very tall and has leaves very thin in nature and it is not at all considered as auspicious to have the tree we feel that is a trouble to have the tree in the house the tree name is ashoka tree why that god that one is that there are some stories regarding to hindu mythology and all where lord in ravan we get some eclipse saying that here we have some sita being staying under the tree and crying so wherever you have that tree there is a possible to to get some sorrows or some kind of problems for you that's why in any of the houses even in any of your houses also you do not find any family growing ashoka tree especially that is another example that's what i want to meant here like there are various varieties of trees grown one is tulsi tree one is neem tree the other trees where you don't consider them they are important but they are also occupying land that is the point here they also occupy a large amount of land in the entire earth so that is one percentage of land and moving on to the other one cultivable waste lands from the past 5 years they are not cultivating any lands that lands are called cultivatable waste lands you can cultivate there you can do agriculture there there is a possibility of doing agriculture there but because there is no water from the past 5 years economically that particular family is weak or financially they are facing some crisis that meant for them to stop cultivation there in that result it is called cultivatable wastelands it can be cultivated but it is not cultivated i am moving on to the other category fallow lands fallow means empty empty lands current fallow lands current fallow lands means do you get current there sir not that kind of doubts current means present current means present presently it is empty what is empty what is present currently it is empty means at present this year because of some problem that particular family did not put any crop that is called current fallow land means this year you did not do cultivation on that particular land every year they do but only this year maybe in family some problem has been there so they were nobody was interested so they did not do anything somebody has been passed away or some some other reasons may be there so that may be meant to be empty in that particular land for that particular year that is called fallow land for one year if it is empty that is called current fallow land don't get misconception like electricity power current no current means present present empty land it is not empty permanently then again category changes it is only empty permanent only when it is coming to category of permanent pastures only five years also you call it as cultivatable waste land only it is only one year so we are calling it with a different name that is current fallow lands next other than current fallow lands are also some lands are there some lands which are permanently dry some are from 5 years dry some are from 1 year dry some are lands but no one is using them from how many years we don't know it may be 2 years it may be 10 years but 
some trees are growing there they may be good trees or bad trees that is secondary no one is doing cultivation there these all categories of lands also come under this other than the current fallow lands then moving on to the net area zone we started with all the dry lands first we started with the forest then the land which is not used for agriculture then we discussed the barren and the wastelands in that again land which is not put for agricultural uses non agricultural uses like building roads buildings factories infrastructure everything other uncultivated lands permanent pasture lands land under trees then we went on to cultivatable wastelands from 5 years which are not been cultivated then fallow lands in that fallow lands again we have current fallow lands this year only they left it other than the fallow lands which are not done under cultivation net area zone the entire area where the crop cropping pattern has been in progress is being done continuously without getting any gap and not falling into any category it is not a land of forest it is not a land of non agricultural use it is permanently used regularly used every year they are using this year also they used that kind of area is known as net area zone so now land has been utilized in different different ways broadly it can be categorized into five categories first one is forest second category is land not for agriculture third category the other uncultivated lands fourth category fallow lands and last but not the least net area zone the entire cultivatable land comes under the category of net area zone category only so that's how the entire land has been categorized the land features all are covered in this one i think it is very good to have a quick recap of this one before concluding this one when i say the finite magnitude it is a fixed magnitude in any physical features of any country you find mountains plains plateaus islands forests other than this do you find any other features you do not find in any country so entire land in the country or in any of the countries or all countries together also same percentage you will get which means all these categories are present in all countries all countries together also you have all mountains plains plateaus plains islands everything so the entire land is considered as a resource where it is again been redivided into mountains plains plateaus islands forests all these things land is been utilized almost in similar way in all countries that's why it has been called as land utilization like forest land not for agriculture other uncultivated lands fallow lands and the entire agricultural lands together that we have in the land utilization pattern if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus